But if you've been under a couple rocks and you don't know why, this video will explain it to you. Elon Musk multitasks better than you. Very few people have influenced more global industries all at once. And as the ambassador of future tech behind some of the world's coolest toys, this young billionaire's passing resemblance to Tony Stark is not a coincidence. For the gazillionth time, we have to thank Elon Musk's big brain for coming up with a, another idea to completely revolutionize civilization. Uh, a future of abundance, a future where um, there, there is no poverty, where people, you can have whatever you want in terms of products and services. Um, it really is a, a, a fundamental transformation of civilization as we know it. I mean, does this man never sleep? Elon Musk truly really is a visionary future man. This is it, folks. I mean, sure, all of his other ideas were complete duds that went nowhere. But this new idea of the robot, this sounds like the big one. I mean, me personally as a Tesla fan, was surprised that no one had thought of this before. Invaders from the fifth dimension. Invaders hey, from the fifth down. dimension. Now, Elon had two versions of the robot to show us. One less advanced and one more advanced. The more advanced one, of course, could stand up on its own, could just about move on its own and wave, kinda? I mean, I was really impressed by that. All of this from the man who knows more about manufacturing than anyone alive on Earth. At this point, I think I know more about manufacturing than anyone currently alive on Earth. And the Tesla fan base was ignited with videos like the real reason Tesla bot will make us all rich and Tesla bot has won the race already. Humanoid robots are essentially a solved problem now. And I'm sure Tesla shares spiked on this great news. Right? What's that? They crashed 10%? Well, I guess it's kind of a spike. And that spike has continued, meaning that now Tesla has lost some 40% of its value this year. And it's at this point that Elon Musk finds out that he really is in a box and will have to buy Twitter after all, which means he's going to have to come out with $50 billion from somewhere, like selling Tesla stock at almost a year's low. But there are multiple factors why Tesla is going through the floor at the moment. With Musk tweeting that now would be a really good time for Ukraine to give Russia everything that it wanted. You know, kind of echoing Kremlin talking points. Leading to, I kid you not, the Kremlin thanking Elon Musk for his contribution. Which led to some interesting replies on Twitter. Mostly involving Teslas being marked with Zs and the Ukrainian ambassador to Germany telling him to F off and how no one will buy his crappy Teslas now. But not just happy with that, he doubled down and tweeted out this 2012, like a, a decade old election map of Ukraine saying that the blue was the pro-Russian party, which again got him featured on the Russian news, who just loved him for this sort of thing. Yeah, so glossing over the 2019 election of Zelensky which people were happy to correct him on. And so he had a Twitter poll as well to go with this. And when Twitter didn't give him the response that he wanted, why, of course it couldn't be that he was wrong. No, it must have been the biggest bot attack he had ever seen. And no, he wasn't going to stop there. He had to tweet something about Taiwan, which again got him thanked by the uh, Chinese government. Kind of makes you think that Elon Musk might be looking around for some people with a lot of money that he can borrow for something. Not quite sure what, though. <coughs> Twitter! But we can come back to the bad day for Tesla later. Meanwhile, in an earlier and shittier Star Wars episode, you know, where things are less sophisticated if you take the fairing off and more sophisticated if you put a fairing on them. Well, Tesla had its less sophisticated robot, which shuffled onto a flat, level stage with no obstacles. It showed exactly zero interaction with the environment. <laughs> and of course, just, just look at that amazing finger dexterity. Putting it more as a, an automaton than an actual robot. Yes, the, the best demo of the world's most advanced robotics featuring moving parts. Yeah, this would be really impressive if it hadn't been done better. Much, much, much better over a decade ago. 
You don't want a nicely brightly lit stage where you can actually see what's going on. But hey, it's Elon Musk. Bill Shatner, tell us again what Elon Musk's passion in life is. At 12, he built a video game he called Blastar, which started his lifelong love of inventing things that already exist. Naturally, being the star of the show, they really wanted to showcase what he could do on stage, which is why out of a three hour event, three hour event, it was on the stage for an entire 80 seconds. I just shuffle on the stage, waved, danced, maybe, and then shuffled off again. Uh, welcome to Tesla AI Day 2022. We've got some really exciting things to show you. That was it. It showed no interaction whatsoever with its environment. And if you were impressed by that level of artificial intelligence, you will be blown away by the more advanced Tesla robot featuring a, a single extra piece of fairing, which now means for some reason it can't stand up, needs loads of people to move on the stage, and it does even less. I mean, just look at that gyro stabilization as the robot automatically tries to keep its balance as it's being rocked around. Uh, yeah, uh, Boston Dynamics, show us how a robot should behave when it's being moved around. It should automatically try and regain its balance. No, I mean, I'm dumb. I, I had gyroscopes on, on quadcopters that were more impressive at keeping their balance. That, oh my God, what's it doing? <laughs> Yeah, clap, look, clap everyone. Look at the audience, it's like no response whatsoever. It's like, what, whoa, I'm gonna be impressed by this? And the entire demo of everything that their uh, advanced Tesla robot could do, which was barely move its fingers, uh, maybe, was an entire 50 seconds out of a three hour event. Yeah, I think they might've been trying to stretch this one out a little. And Elon's there thinking, come on, think Elon, think. We've got nothing to show. How can we make this look really futuristic-y? I know, we'll do what I always do when I have nothing to show. Add disco lighting. Now, bizarrely, before Elon Musk went on to say how this robot would completely change civilization and render in an age of abundance where everyone was rich and happy and did whatever they wanted, he added this rather interesting caveat. I do want to set some expectations with respect to uh, our Optimus robot. Um, as, as you know, last year, it was just a person in a robot suit. Uh, but uh, we've, now, we've come a long way, and it's, uh, I think, we've, you know, compared to that, it's going to be very impressive. At this point, I think I know more about manufacturing than anyone currently alive on Earth. Yeah, but they had all this stuff about robot vision. Right? The autopilot neural networks running as is just retrained for the bot uh, directly on that on that new platform. That's yeah. my watering can. Yeah, when you when you see a rendered view, that's that's the robot. What's the that's the world the robot sees? Did they? Odd. They didn't show any of that on stage. There was zero interaction between the automaton and the environment. So this is essentially the simple self-driving computer that runs in your Tesla cars, by the way. Yeah, in what way exactly? In that it's made of silicon and runs on electricity? That's sort of essentially the same. Because if that's the same self-driving software that runs on a, on a Tesla, then it's completely non-responsive to the environment. Seriously, it shows no awareness to be able to move around objects whatsoever. You see, this is the thing. In the last year, I got a robot vacuum cleaner, a new, more advanced robot vacuum cleaner for about $500. So this is the sort of thing that a sort of off-the-shelf robot vacuum cleaner will do these days. Now in this thing, out of the box, you just plonk it down and it maps out the environment. It finds the foreign objects and then avoids them and cleans everything else. Sorry, it's got an AI autopilot that uses machine learning to adapt to any environment. But really, this is a more impressive robotics demonstration than anything Tesla had on stage, in that at least this robot could interact with its environment. In that I could demonstrate live this robot interacting with the environment and doing stuff, something that the Optimus Automaton was incapable of doing.
<laughs> this is somehow going to make human labor obsolete. And I want to be clear, this isn't some amazing experimental cutting edge robot. This is something you can buy off the shelf, you know, plug from say an Amazon affiliates thing. This is actually a product that exists. And this is a far more impressive demonstration of a robot interacting with its environment than what Tesla demonstrated on stage. Now, sure, a lot of grad students did a lot of work on this, but I don't care how much work went into this. I care about what it can do, which is arthritic senior citizen speed as a giant bowl of apple puree food coma is setting in. Even the pre-recorded stuff is deeply unconvincing. I mean, just watch this clip here. Yeah, we wanted to show a little bit more what we've done over the past few months with the pod and just walking around and dancing on stage. Uh, just humble beginnings, but uh, you can see the autopilot neural networks running as is, just retrained for the bot. Uh, the now, you might have thought that you actually watched the robot actually do something there. So you might have thought that you watched the robot carry a package up to a table, put the package down from another camera angle, and then you're watching the same thing as the robot walks away from the robot's vision. In reality, what you see is this guy on the table next to where the automaton is approaching, carrying a package, and in the very next shot, all of a sudden, his computer is closed down and he's standing behind the robot. And in the very next shot, the screen that was blank before now has a robot on it for no particular reason. And boom, in an instant, the guy has got his laptop back out and is typing on it. Not only that, the desks have gone from being clearly separated to clearly pushed together. And when you need that level of editing to claim that your uh, automaton can actually do things, let's just say I'm skeptical. See, wasn't that awesome? Like and share. Or print this out and send it to your grandma. But hey, this is the Elon Musk who had a billion dollar crusade to stop the AI apocalypse. Now it's back in 2017. Now he's already on AI Day 2. You know, accelerating the AI apocalypse because, well, anything's better than buying Twitter. Which brings us to five times Elon Musk promised to change the world. It really is a... a a fundamental transformation of civilization as we know it. And delivered nothing, or almost nothing. Number one, the robo-taxi. Now, you might think these most outrageous promises here were the robots, but nah, it's the robo-taxi, the most delusional promise that any human being has ever made. You see, Elon Musk was promising robo-taxis by 20 20. And we expect to have the first operating robo-taxis next year, with no one in them. And even though there's no sign that they will ever be ready, Elon Musk is still very confident that they'll be ready in um, two years' time. No, 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 no. I, I was very confident about 2020 and 2021 and 2022, but now I've got a really good feeling about 2024. But the real reason I'm showing you this is because I want you to contrast AI Day 2 in 2022 with Autonomy Day in 2019. Just to get a scope of how much of these promises are pure vaporware. So we expect this to operate um, it's similar, it's sort of like a combination of maybe the Uber and Airbnb model. When you use the car, we'll show you our ride sharing app. So you'll be able to, be able to summon the car from the parking lot get in and go for a drive. So the current cost of Ro Model 3 Robo Taxi is less than $38,000. We expect that number to improve over time. Two years from now, we, 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 we make a car that has no steering wheels or pedals. And you'll be stunned to find out that even now, years on, Elon Musk has not made a car with no steering wheel and no pedals. And if we need to accelerate that time, we can always just delete parts, easy. It maybe it ends up being $25,000 or less. But this is where we get into the part where Elon Musk makes the most delusional promise ever made in any Ponzi scheme ever. You say, what would be the probable gross profit from a single robo-taxi? Um, we think probably something on the order of $30,000 per year. So that would be what? A 100% return on investment per year. 
So in nominal dollars, that would be, you know, a little over $300,000 over the course of 11 years. It might be higher. I think these consumptions are actually relatively conservative. Um, uh, bullshit. By the middle of next year, uh, we'll have over a million Tesla cars on the road with full self-driving hardware, feature complete, uh, at a reliability level that we would consider uh, that no one needs to pay attention. We will have over a million robo-taxis on the road. By the end of 2022, Tesla has zero robo-taxis on the road. So, um, so the robot can actually do a lot more than we just showed you. Yeah, sure it can, Elon. But coming back to the uh, robo-taxis, the mere fact that he could say this at a, a public event, Autonomy Day 2019, and not get laughed off stage goes a long way to showing why Tesla is riding one of the biggest techno Ponzi stock bubbles in history. If I give you $30,000 to invest in the stock market, where inflation is a historical couple of percent or that sort of thing, high risk stocks will give you 10% return with a much higher chance of actually losing some of your investment. Low risk, maybe five. Elon Musk was promising 100% return on investment guaranteed with zero risk. Indeed, if Elon had actually believed a single word of what he was saying here, they would have stopped selling Teslas immediately. Because at that point, Teslas would be effectively money printing machines. And if you've invented a money printing machine, you don't sell them. You keep them for yourself to generate profit for yourself. And the mere fact that Elon Musk was selling them kind of points to the fact that he knew it was all bullshit. Yeah. I mean, the, the fundamental, really fundamental message that consumers should be taking um, today is that it's financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. They will be, it'll be like owning a horse in three years. I mean, fine if you want to own a horse, but you should go into it with that expectation. Actually, the take home message is if what you're saying is true, then it would be financially insane to sell them. But we don't really need to speculate here. What did he say? A million robo taxis by 2020. So it should be about $30,000 profit per year per robo taxi. So they should have generated about $30 billion in the first year and $30 billion in the second, $30 billion in the third meaning that they should have generated somewhere in the region of $100 billion of money so far. Actual money generated by robo-taxis? Zero. Like, people should really think about their purchase, uh, any, any, other, any other vehicle. It's, it's basically crazy to buy any other car than a Tesla. Hey, what the hell's going on? Oh, I didn't get rich by writing a lot of checks. <laughs> the fundamental message that consumers should be taking um, today is that it's financially insane to buy anything other than a Tesla. Actually, I think the take home message for consumers really should be beware of con men making bogus promises. Interestingly, this was all meant to be based on the uh, full self-driving that was the same thing that's meant to be powering the robot. So this is essentially the same full self-driving computer that runs in your Tesla cars, by the way. <laughs> you know, the robot that doesn't show any ability to detect obstacles in the environment. Incidentally, I'll bet dollars to donuts, there's no full self-driving in this thing. Else they would have actually demoed it, you know, yeah, get someone to stand in its way and it can, it can shuffle around them at senior citizen speed. You know, a really, really simple demonstration that it actually interacts with the environment. But no, none of that in the actual on-stage demonstration. Now, remember it was five or so years ago that Tesla first showed their full self-driving where the human was only in the car for legal reasons. The car was doing everything on its own. Well, maybe technically right, the human is there only for legal reasons, you know, to take legal responsibility if the autopilot kills someone. In fact, here's an idea, Tesla. If it really is full self-driving, and I'm gonna channel Marvel a bit here, Uncle Ben had a saying about great power. Like say, for instance, with driving a car comes great responsibility. And with full self-driving comes full responsibility. Naturally, we know that if Tesla was actually held to full responsibility for their full self-driving, it would be called glorified cruise control or driving assistance or some crap like that by the end of the day. 
However, you know all of this was faked, because otherwise, how did they have a level 5 full self-driving six years ago in 2016? Yet, even today, drivers are required to have their hands on the steering wheel at all times and ready to take over at an instant. The drivers of full self-driving are basically required to be driving. Remind me how that makes this a full self-driving system again? And you'll be happy to know with this amazing product that may do the worst thing at the wrong time. The price has just gone up to $15,000. From this, you'll learn the most important lesson, that if Elon Musk is on stage, don't believe it unless it's actually demoed in front of you. And even if it is demoed in front of you, still probably don't believe a word of it. Which brings us to number two, solar roofs. He was going to make a, a solar roof cheaper, more efficiently and faster than anyone else in history. You know, solar roofs that look better than a uh, normal roof, generate electricity, have, last longer, have better insulation, um, and actually have a cost, an installed cost that is less than a normal roof plus the cost of electricity. So then, then why would you buy anything else? Using a 50-year-old idea that he had made so advanced so quickly that they already had it installed on four different houses with four different aesthetic looks. Like, the interesting thing is that the houses you see around you are all solar houses. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you, did you notice? Yeah. 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 So. Except, no. The whole thing was completely faked. So we're going to show you, this is the before shot of that house over there. So, so that's what it looked like before. Now that's um, all solar. Elon Musk just lied to his fans. What yeah. do you do, guys? I think we've got some close-up shots that we can show. Wow, just look at all that non-functioning solar roof. This is a textured glass tile. Um, if you look carefully, you can see the... Solar, the solar cells. And if you look really closely, they're not connected to anything. Right, so th that house is also solar. Actually, that's not really what came out when Elon Musk was under oath in court. It was more like, uh, yeah, what Elon meant to say is, that's what a house with the solar roof might look like. Um, and that's a, a sort of a style of a, of a French slate. This is all complete vaporware, bear in mind. It didn't exist then, and it doesn't exist now. Okay, can we make a French slate roof that's solar that looks as good or, or better than a, than a conventional uh, French slate roof? And we're able to do that as well. Seriously, this is Musk being cross-examined about this in court. Okay, those were not working models of roofs. They were just mock-ups, correct? To which Musk replies, they had solar cells on them. So you could, uh, it actually was, I think, very effective in demonstrating that you could have solar roof tiles, solar glass roof tiles with solar cells on the backside without negatively affecting the aesthetics, which is very important, which might all be very important, but that's not the same thing as being able to make them, which is what Elon Musk was actually claiming there. Okay, can we make a French slate roof that solo that looks as good or, or better than a, than a conventional uh, French slate roof. And we're able to do that as well. Again, let me stress, this didn't exist then, which is now six years ago, and it doesn't exist now. Um, th that's done with hydrographic printing. So each tile is unique. So it's, it's, uh, the, the production process itself makes each tile especially unique. So, um, here we, we, we put a, a film with microlubers on it so that as, as the angle changes, it goes from transparent to opaque. Yeah, it takes a special degree of uh, seamless to be able to lie this brazenly about a fictional product you claim you have in your hand. Probably the, the most surprising one is the, the Tuscan, Tuscan glass. So this is also solar panels. But we've put two versions of the, the, the Tuscan glass approach. Um, all of the dark tiles have solar panels. Now, eventually a product did emerge, but it was only available in one style. Looked nothing like any of the products that Musk claimed they had made. Was much more expensive, took longer to install, and was made in China. 
But no, not only did Musk unveil a completely fake product, he had fake tests done on his fake product to show people how good his fake product was. On a conventional roof tile and one of our glass tiles. So. Yeah, not quite sure whether applauding there. All of those tiles have broken, apart from the one with the solar cell in, of course, will now be an electrical hazard and will cost a gazillion times more to replace. <laughs> Even if Musk is demoing a product to you live on stage, probably still don't believe a word of it. And if he has videos of what he says the product can do, also don't believe a word of it, because he's done it before with 100% vaporware. Which brings us to number three, nuclear bomb resistant glass. And this is the feature I like best, thermonuclear explosion proof glass. <laughs> close, I mean it's close. So standard glass, now, now why is this important? Because, uh, uh, you see, look, nothing. Um, survived a nuclear explosion. That was incredible. You know, Tuffin Glass as a product has been available for decades, but he was going to use it on the windscreen of the Tesla Semi. And look, Elon had videos of it working, which, of course, we're completely going to believe, right? Until, of course, two years later, when they do a demo of the same glass being used on the uh, Cybertruck, it just wasn't quite as successful. Sure? Yeah. Oh my f***ing god. Well, it didn't go through. Let's so that's a, that's a plus side. Let's try the right. Try that one, really? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Oh <laughs> man. It didn't go through. <laughs> All right. And at that point, I should state that a million or so Tesla fans put down a $100 deposit on a product that still hasn't been produced at all and wouldn't be street legal in large parts of the world, like say for instance, Europe. But maybe just to highlight why putting such toughened glass in a regular street vehicle is really stupid. Imagine you're in a Tesla and in an instant your power dies and you're locked in a car filling with fumes. Well, obviously you just break the window and get out. Yeah, 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 that was, I had to smash the window. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I kicked the, I kicked through the window yeah. because everything stopped. Yeah. The the power didn't work, the door didn't open, the, yeah. the windows didn't go down, so I'm like, hey, I need to get out of this car. Now imagine you've got thermonuclear explosion proof glass in your windows. Yeah, you're gonna probably have a few harsh minutes to realize why that wasn't the smartest choice you could have made. But on the bright side, each Tesla battery failure comes with a free roadside barbecue. After this, Tesla decided that they weren't going to live demo products that might fail, and so they went back to the pre-recorded thing. Which is why, for the Optimus reveal, you had lots of video of it uh, working, but none of it demonstrated working on stage. And for those who want closure on what happened to the scammy, sorry, the Tesla Semi, well, it originally was promised in 2017 with full autopilot that would be safer than a human now. Um, the, the convoy technology, the tracking technology, this is something that we are confident we can do today 10 times safer than a human driver. So this is, I want to be clear, this is something we can do now. And maybe just a slight reminder about how this is about Elon Musk promising everything and delivering nothing. So, and that's, that's I think, really quite, quite profound. Um, we're confident that this is a product that is better in every way from a feature standpoint, that wins on economics against uh, uh, diesel trucks in a worst case scenario, and that defeats rail um, in a convoy scenario. And it was gonna be delivered in 2019. And pr production begins 2019. So if you order now, get the car, the truck in two years. But of course, there was nothing delivered in 2019 or 2020 or 2021. But wait, they were totally going to receive the first models in the fourth quarter of 2021. But of course, 
nothing was delivered then. And so here we are a year later, and Elon Musk's just tweeted out, no, there will totally be a delivery in the fourth quarter of 2022. Which, if I'm being honest, is probably just to try and slow down the crashing of the Tesla stock. It had no effect. Number four, the Hyperloop, completely revolutionizing travel. In this video, we'll take a look at the Hyperloop, the brand new method of transport brought forth by the entrepreneur and billionaire Elon Musk. But it would be for, for a fifth mode of transports. I have a name for it, name for it which is called the Hyperloop. Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop, yeah. Yeah, this one's the one that really sets it all off. Yeah, Elon Musk takes a hundred year old idea and claims it's a brand new idea that he's invented. And the fact that there were people making animations and videos about how they had invented it years before he came up with it didn't bother him at all. Now, he was still going to claim it was his idea. Name for it, which is called the Hyperloop. A new means of underground transport similar to a wheelless train Hyperloop? Uh, Hyperloop, yeah. Um, like you just get in it, whisks you? Uh, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, and I'll, I'll tell you the characteristics. It's similar to a wheelless train or a wingless aeroplane, able to carry passengers in perfect safety at over 500 kilometers an hour, that's what Swiss Metro is proposing. From downtown LA to downtown San Francisco in under 30 minutes. <laughs> And a year or two after inventing something that had been around for a hundred or so years, he made a vacuum tube. I mean, sure, it wasn't long enough to do any real tests. I'm sure it can hold a vacuum good enough for his predictions of what a Hyperloop would need. What this competition is about is encouraging people to think about new modes of transport, things that could radically transform cities and the way people get around. Yeah, but making a straight track was beyond our ability, so... You're just going to have to work around that. And uh, what you're working on is the only thing I'm aware of that could actually be a radical improvement of this current state of the art. And sure, the pods were all just small electric cars made by students. And at the very front, we also have a very nice 3D printed seat just to show what the Hyperloop is actually for, which is transporting people. Smithies, I've designed a new plane. I call it the Spruce Moose, and it will carry 200 passengers from New York's Idlewild Airport to the Belgian Congo in 17 minutes. That's quite a nice model, sir. Model? And those tiny electric cars basically got no benefit from running in the uh, vacuum tube. Our team alone, which is 27 members, represents 12 different countries. MIT's motto is mind and hand, and Hyperloop really puts the mind and hand work together. But they had lots of university students working on it, because that's really where you go if you want to make progress. And it's now been a decade or so since Elon Musk's legendary white paper. <laughs> but it's really not that hard. It still sounds pretty complicated, Elon. It's like a tube with an air hockey table. It's really, I swear it's not that hard. <laughs> By tapping into some shared dream, Musk inspires a legion of new tech pioneers ready to fork away from the old established paths and start making good on the promise of a more awesome future. Nope, the Hyperloop went nowhere. But it is pretty impressive to get that many students worked up into such a frenzy over something you can fairly simply show is complete bullshit. And Elon Musk's uh, test tube is still just a rusty tube outside SpaceX headquarters. I really should go back there someday and see how that thing's aging. What I can say is we're going to move to just truly massive scale. Uh, scale that uh, no company has uh, ever achieved in, in, in the history of humanity. And believe it or not, despite the fact that this has been a cataclysmic failure from start to finish, there are still Elon Musk fans who gush over the Hyperloop. Hyperloop is one of Elon's more infamous ideas. A report that he self-published back in 2013 outlines his vision for an ultra-high-speed bullet train that moves through an underground vacuum tube floating on a pocket of air at near supersonic velocity. Well, oddly enough, when I first debunked the Hyperloop, I had no idea who Musk was. None whatsoever. I just knew the idea wasn't genius, it was really stupid. 
And this was one of my first busting videos, which I got a lot of pushback on, you know, because apparently Elon Musk was a genius billionaire and I was just some nobody on YouTube. The system is proposed to travel at an average speed of 900 kilometers an hour and at a top speed of 1,220 kilometers an hour. It's also much cheaper to build. It's about one tenth the cost of the proposed California high speed railway system. This means that tickets could cost as little as $25. How's that working out for you, boys? I trust you're enjoying your, your daily 30-minute commute between Los Angeles and San Francisco for $20. I'm sure that's working out great for you. Which brings us on to number five, tunnels that actually pay you to dig them. And um, yeah, so, so then like, if we can actually take the dirt from the tunnel and instead of just dumping it somewhere, we can turn it into something useful. So we're gonna make bricks out of the dirt from the tunnel and then sell the bricks. The tunnel could actually pay for itself with just bricks. Like a lot of these things are really quite elementary, but are not done. Yes, selling bricks and actually making more money than the tunnel cost to dig. It was essentially a way of getting free tunnels and free money. And of course, it was complete and utter bullshit. And five or so years later on, Elon Musk has used his uh, SpaceX technology. So we, we get to um, use rocket technology to build tunnels. To build a super advanced tunneling machine that went about 10 times slower than a regular tunnel boring machine. And this will shock you, made zero bricks. Yeah, even when Elon Musk is on stage demoing a product, don't believe a word of it. Which brings us on to what did we actually see the uh, Tesla bot achieve? Well, there's zero evidence that it was even aware of the environment. Completely non-responsive to the environment. It was just a bunch of pre-recorded stuff, which given that most of Elon Musk's pre-recorded stuff to date has been bullshit, let's just say I don't believe it till I see it working on stage. You know, like I did the best part of a decade ago. Yeah, this is the sort of level of robotics I would expect from a year's work off a bunch of university students. So in reality, all they actually demonstrated was an advanced version of this. And not crazy advanced either. There are folks on YouTube who make stuff like this for fun. It's made of aluminium and it's made of 3D printed parts. And also it can breathe fire when I did the collaboration with Look Mum No Computer. So if you're subscribed to the channel, you'll of course know all about Open Dog, the last video in the series. Yeah, after dozens of fake presentations, fake products and fake promises, you gotta face it, Musk really isn't real life Iron Man. He's serial Elizabeth Holmes. As for him uh, changing his mind back to buying Twitter, I don't know, it might just be a ploy to buy time. As I've said before, if there aren't people out there with $50 billion wanting to buy Tesla stock, Elon Musk cannot afford to buy Twitter. And with the Tesla stock crashing, well, let me just say I've got my popcorn on standby. You see, when Musk originally bailed on buying Twitter, he posted this meme because he was just so amused by it all. They said I couldn't buy Twitter. Then would disclose the bot info. Now they're forcing me to buy Twitter in court. Now they have to disclose the bot info in court. And the memes just kind of been upgraded since. Then my own analyst said the monetizable daily users was accurate. Uh, wasted time. Wasted millions. Wreck Twitter. And we'll pay full price anyway. That's a shame. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Anyway, that's today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, drop a thumbs up on it. Subscribe so you didn't miss out on more great videos like this. And as ever, if you really like the work of this channel and want to support it directly, you can do it through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching.